Hello, good evening. Thought for the evening. Do you know the guys out there, some of you really just don't get it, do you? It's great to plan a future here in the Philippines. It's great to dream of tropical island, beautiful women, great food, and living the life of Riley, as they say. But really, are there, are they really understanding what you have to understand when you come to the Philippines? I mean, when I came to the Philippines, I knew nothing. So I put my hand up. I did no research except to find out where the problems were with the Muslims fighting the Christians, or so to speak. So I gave Mindanao, at the time, a big wide berth. I've since discovered that it only affects certain parts. It's considered probably unwise to settle there. But all of the other islands are pretty safe to, to go and live in. There's always drama getty if you haven't got anywhere else to go to. But the reality is that we just don't seem... The guys just don't seem to get the message as to what you're actually looking for. It's not about the women. It's not about, you know, there's millions, literally millions of beautiful women here. There's always going to be one that fits the bill for you. There'll be either she'll be 18, 20, and she just fits the bill. 40, 50 years gap, who cares? And I don't say that tongue in cheek because it does work for some people. After all, if it works for five or ten years before you cark it, then it's worked for you, hasn't it? And the point is that for some, it's more important to find somebody who fills all the little, ticks all the boxes, so to speak. And she has at least got a certain amount of level intellectually, to yourself. She's had similar experiences in her life, whether it's here or overseas. That helps a lot if they have an understanding of the way things are overseas. But even if they haven't been overseas, if they've worked hard, they've struggled to get their families off to college, through, through kindergarten, up through high school, all of those, senior high, they've been widowed, they've lost members of their family, then they've experienced life probably a lot more so than we have. And therefore, they probably are looking just to live out their days with somebody who they can talk to in the evenings, I suppose in an old-fashioned way, sit there doing the knitting while they watch Grandad watching his favourite TV programme. And that's really what a lot of women are looking for. They're just looking for someone who's a companion, someone they can rely on, someone who they can feel that they've got a connection. It's not always about the wallet, because a lot of women feel bad about asking for money. They are content, I should say, with what they've got. And therefore, what you have to offer is a bonus. It's like candles on the cake. And we all know what that looks like. It looks exciting and it's bright and it's wonderful. And we can sing about it. But the reality is that you guys just don't seem... You're, you're trying to create a relationship. You want a marriage, possibly. You want to live the rest of your life with that woman in your heart. So, why don't you think that way? Why do you not think all the things that could happen that you need to put into place? How are you going to pay for her funeral? What if one of her daughters or sons dies early? Will you have enough to help the family to do it? Because it will fall on your responsibility. You're the man of the house now. And therefore, it's not about being a foreigner. You're the man of the house. And in the sense, you want a traditional woman. 
you want somebody who doesn't mind cooking, enjoys cooking maybe, making cakes even, but also knows that keeping a house is good, sweeping the outside is good, maybe getting you to sweep the outside is good too, keeps you fit, maybe wants to sit on a little stool with you in the garden, doing a bit of gardening, maybe wants to wander around gardening centres with you. All the things that you would be probably doing if you had stayed in your own country and married the love of your life there. Because that's the only difference between there and here. The only difference is here is they're not English, they're not American, they're not Australian or New Zealander, German or French or Swedish or Spanish. They are Filipina. And unless you embrace everything that they have, how can you expect to embrace your life here? How can you not then otherwise feel like, oh, this isn't for me. I need to go somewhere else. Because if that is the case, then you're not only wasting your time, you're breaking her heart too. Because she will believe the moment you really start putting your foot, your feet under the table, so to speak, that you're here for good. You're here, she will bury you, she will care for you, she will look after you. She will mourn you when you're gone. And isn't that what we want? Isn't that what we desire? Isn't that what we wanted at the start of our lives? We thought that this beautiful woman standing alongside, you know, to love and to hold, to cherish, blah, 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 till death do us part. Isn't that what we want here? Because death till we part is much closer. And we haven't got time to waste time. We haven't got time to play games. The only time we have left is precious, not just for you, but for her too. She will have the memories of you. So whatever you portray to her, if you're a grumpy old shit, if you're a loving, caring person, a considerate person, a generous person, that's what she will remember. That's what the family will remember. Yes, of course you're going to help the family. Not to the point of paying every bill, but of course if there's a, a way, there's a, an ability to do it, of course you will do that. Why wouldn't you? You know, they don't have the resources, but maybe you can help. Maybe uh, an extra 2,000, or maybe an extra 3,000, maybe 4,000, maybe 10,000 pesos. Makes a lot of difference. Just remember, you know, she's a little simple. When I say simple, not silly, but just not well educated. Why not? Why not? Put her through uni, put her through so that she finishes senior high school, so she has a chance to go to college. Help her build a future for herself. You can afford it. My goodness, Jera, 48,000 per semester, something like that. Well, you know, it seems like a lot of money, but try doing it overseas. 48,000? about a thousand, less than a thousand dollars American, you know, so just think, those are the things you can help with, not flashy cars, not necessarily flashy homes, a home, yes, maybe some land that you lease, and you guys, oh, you can't own land in the Philippines, no, that's true, you can't, but you can lease it, and if you get a good attorney, what you do is you make sure that whatever you lease, you can sublease as well. So in other words, if things go pear-shaped, you can still sell the leased land with the lease, with the right of renewal, to the next person who buys your house. Remember, the house is in your name, maybe. In my case, the house isn't mine. It's Jane's. I built it for her. Her and her two beautiful girls. And they're doing really well. 
And this is, this is where you get the feeling of worth in life. When you walk along the road and everybody in the barangay who knows you by face or by name will always greet you. You can have small conversations with them. It's fun. Be part of a community. Stop remembering, oh, back in the US of A, or back in Australia, or back in England, we did it this way. No, you do it this way, Filipino style. You get to know people. Don't be afraid to say hello to people. Don't be afraid to have a conversation. They were only too pleased to have one with you. And if it goes on for a bit longer than you do, just tell them, I'm sorry, I didn't bring any tissues. Tissues, they look at you. Nosebleed, meaning that you're going on and on and on. They will laugh at that. And every time you think something has maybe been taken the wrong way, charot, meaning joking, then you'll break the ice. Now and again, you'll get somebody who just doesn't get you. Walk away. Just be pleasant. Walk away. All these things are things I point out. They're not detrimental to living in the Philippines. Don't put off the one chance you have to start again like you started again at the age of, well, if you're a baby boomer, from 17, 18 years of age, like the first day I arrived in New Zealand, just like here in the Philippines. It's a new start, new day, new way of thinking, and a great place to retire. So if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget, subscribe, and tell your friends and press the notification button to all the rings and all the bells and whistles. In other words, we'll let you know when the next video comes up. So I hope you've enjoyed this waffle on this evening and we'll probably hear from me again tomorrow. Bye now.